Hi everyone, welcome to Serenity in Stitches. My name is Christina and I'm happy to be here with you today. I hope everybody's doing well. I'm coming to you from Portland, Oregon area and it's a beautiful sunny day again. <laughs> I'm loving this weather. It's really crisp and cool out, but the sun is shining. So that's always a nice plus when you live in Oregon. <laughs> Um, today I'm going to be going over uh, my Finish It February items. I have about three and a half days left in the month of February and I've made some good progress and I have learned that if I focus on just a couple of projects at a time and not have uh, five or six going that I'm you know hopping back and forth to, I get a lot more done and um, I think part of it is when I set a project down and I come back to it a couple days later, I have to re-familiarize myself with where I'm at, what am I doing, what does the pattern say, am I on track, do, do I have this, do I have that, versus having it in my hands day after day, I'm familiar with it, I'm, I'm much quicker to pick it up and start knitting again or crocheting again. So. So if nothing else, this experience has really taught me that if I want to get things done, I need to focus on one or two items, maybe three, because <laughs> I'll always have a blanket, a crochet blanket going or two, and um, probably always a garment going. And then in between those things, maybe like a wrap or a shawl. I don't know. I've But it's 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 been a good lesson. It's been a good month. And so... Uh, let's jump right in. Um, the first thing I want to talk to you about is my ranunculus. And this is an item that I re-knit um, because it was really big on me. And I just felt like I was drowning in it. And I knew I would love the pattern or the sweater once it was the right size. So I did, I've did. i talked about this quite a bit. But I'm getting a lot done. Um, here you can see my progress. I, I finished. I, I like to clip. Uh, this is a good little tip here. I like to use my hair clips to clip a ball of yarn to the actual sleeve or wherever it is if the yarn is staying attached so it's not rolling all over the place, coming undone, getting in my way. Um, I did almost finish this sleeve. Um, I'm, if you're familiar with the pattern, you'll know that the sleeves uh, has an option for you to do some short rows, short row shaping like at the elbow. Um, I, I did that sleeve. Let's see, which sleeve is it? Oh, this one here. I did this uh, right sleeve with the shaping, but it I'm not happy with it. I, I think it's a little too loose around the elbow area. So I've got this one that I'm working on and I'm uh, doing it a little differently. I'm just going to knit straight until I want to put a cuff and then use the um, knit through the back loop ribbing to uh, put a little cuff on it. And I think I'm going to like this one better, but I decided not to rip this one out until I knew for sure. <laughs> and then um, actually, I think it was the last video I did. I was done with the ribbing on the bottom. However, when I went to try it on, it was too short. It wasn't the right length that I wanted. So I had to tear the ribbing out, knit another inch or inch and a half, I would say. And then I started the ribbing again. And so I'm finishing the ribbing and then I'm gonna try it on to see which sleeve I like better or what I wanna exactly do with the sleeves to finish it up. Uh, then it'll be done and I'll be very happy. <laughs> Um, so that's my ranunculus, a knit sweater, and it's this is a great pattern. Um, thousands of people have made this pattern, and you learn a lot of new stitches. Um, it's a little different construction than maybe you're used to, even though I, although for me, I haven't knit. This actually is my first sweater that I've knit, so it's not really different to me, but from what I've heard other people... Um, that you have to trust the process and that it will come out okay. Just, you know, trust the pattern and, and keep following it. And it's funny because there's some people that have to have that control and have a hard time letting go of how a sweater should be made and, you know, adjusting the pattern. But it, it's just kind of fun. It's kind of interesting. 
Um, the next item that I've been really focusing on, and especially now that I'm done with, almost done with this sweater, I've picked up my Douglas Cardi. And this is from a pattern by Andrea Mowry. And I put it on a hanger here so you could get an idea. Here's the back, um, the length of the back here. You can see my ribbing at the bottom. So um, I did make my sweater a little longer than Andrea Mowry made hers. And um, I've got the pockets, um, or the place for the pockets um, right here where I'm gonna cut into them and, and insert the pockets, which I've never done before. So it's gonna be fun to, to insert some pockets and I've just got it marked off with some um, scrap yarn at the moment. So this side here um, is, I'm done with this side up to the pattern. Um, this is where, let's see, this is where the sleeves are gonna start here. You can kind of see that opening. And this side is a little, it's a little uh, shorter because I haven't quite finished um, knitting upwards um, on this side. So that's where I'm at. I'm at the upper left side of the sweater and I've just got to knit up uh, about another couple of stripes. And then I believe, well, I don't know. I don't know what's next. I think then you go round and round <laughs> to finish off the, the um, top of the sweater. So, but yeah, I'm loving the colors and it's not too heavy because I'm always warm and I think it's going to be an, a great sweater, a great can cardigan and my first cardigan at that. So, um, as a reminder, I'm using Lion Brand Jeans yarn for the majority of the colors and um, this one is Top Stitch and I've got... Uh, several others that I talked about before. And then one of these colors is the Hobie Amigo. It's this, this is kind of a gold, goldish tan color here. Um, it's, it's warmer than the, than the, um, I don't know if you can tell the difference there. If I, the, the ribbing on the bottom is more of an off-white color and this is more of a tan beige, kind of a goldish beige. Um, anyway, it, it flows, it works really well. So, so yeah, there's that. And I have, what, three more days, three and a half more days. I'm feeling pretty good. I know I'll be able to finish this ranunculus and I know I'll be very close if not finished with the um, Douglas Cardi. And then I do have a finished object and that is my Amigo blanket. I decided to call, I make a lot of blankets that are um, double crochet blankets. And I love using Hobie Amigo Held Double, which I talked about quite a bit. It's just really soft and fluffy and they use a special process to blow air into the yarn to make it fluffy. And um, I haven't experienced any pilling, um, but most of the blankets I've made, I've given away to my kids and my husband and and others and so um i i should ask them i should ask them how is it with pilling and uh because some of some of them have had blankets that are about a year and a half old almost now so um there's there'd be some good information there for me as far as amigo so if it's just a basic uh double crochet blanket with amigo yarn hobie amigo yarn that's what it is i'm calling it my amigo blanket and I just did uh, two rounds of uh, linen stitch uh, on the edge to give it a nice finished edge. And I had run out of this turquoise color. So you see I've got a white striped turquoise, light gray, and this bright um, coral, um, neon coral color. And then it, it should um, continue with that same pattern, the white, uh, teal, gray, and the coral, but I started running out of yarn. So after this coral one on this end, I decided to not order more yarn, but just finish it with smaller stripes, um, going through each of the colors in smaller stripes and then finishing off with the same color as the other edge over here. So both edges are, yeah. So that's my blanket and I love it. Um, I figured it's a great to have if there's a birthday, I want to give somebody a gift or if it's still here by next Christmas, I'll put it in 
Um, we do a white elephant with our family every year and everybody that wants to participate brings a gift. And um, so I might put it in the white elephant. We'll see if it's still here by that point. I mean, if somebody were to come to me and say, oh my gosh, I love that color combo. It's so soft. I'd probably be like, do you want it? <laughs> uh, because I love sharing my, um, my makes. So let's see, what else do I have going? Um, okay, so that's my finished object. And I think I'm gonna spend my time on um, the next few days on the cardigans, the cardigan and the sweater, finishing those off. And I think it's gonna take all two and a half days. So, or is it three, three days? What is it, 25th, three and a half days? Um, uh, but I do have a couple of blankets, but I'll just keep those in the rotation um, till they're done. I did do a little shopping. I decided to stock up. I decided to stock up on a pound of love. Um, last week it was on sale for $6.99. And if you've been to the Lion Brand website, you know that their prices have gone way up. Um, some things they say are on clearance and I'm looking at it going, that doesn't feel like clearance. <laughs> All yarn is going up. Uh, it's not just Lion Brand. Um, but Lion Brand, I use quite a bit of their yarn. So um, when I saw Pound of Love on sale for $6.99, I jumped on it and I've got several colors here. This is Clar Claret, which is this beautiful reddish, reddish maroon color. And I got their dark gray. I didn't see a charcoal, but I did see this dark gray. It, it's still a very nice gray. It is called, where is it? Sumac, S-U-M-A-C. So that's a beautiful gray, um, but it, it's just different. I wasn't, I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting a charcoal and then other lighter grays. I got a medium gray and this is called Oxford gray. And that's another beautiful color. And let's see, this color is, I didn't bring my glasses in, elephant gray. Elephant gray, it almost looks kind of white, huh? Elephant gray, very pale, very pale gray. And then I got uh, this pound of love, it's called quartz. Yes, quartz, and this is a gorgeous color. So I got a lot of neutrals in the grays, and then I got this quartz color that I fell in love with, and then that maroon red, which, yeah, it's like a dark, almost with black specks in it, the red, um, because I knew I could put these together and make something, make a blanket. That's it. And I, I wanted to find a worsted weight yarn that, um, a worsted weight yarn that I could purchase and start stocking up different colors for blankets because I've been using the Hobie Amigo and I'm happy holding those two DK strands together to make chunky blankets. But sometimes I want a little chunkier and um, I thought, well, if I get a worsted weight, I it would make a great blanket on its own, worsted, or I could hold them double and it would be a, probably a, a close to a super chunky, super bulky yarn. Um, so yeah, um, Pound of Love doesn't have as many colors as I had hoped. Um, I know Lion Brand does have some more than Joann's, I believe. Um, but it, it, it's not, it's not as the, the selection is not what I'd hoped for. So I'm looking at maybe Knit Picks uh, Brava and I do have a skein, a couple skeins over here, hold on. So yeah, I am looking at Knit Picks Brava. Now this um, persimmons color is their worsted weight and this, um, I forgot what this color is called. Anyway, this is their bulky. Um, so it's kind of nice that they, and they have tons of colors. Uh, so I'm really leaning towards this. If you have any input, if you've used Brava Worsted or Brava Bulky, any Brava, um, let me know what you think and how it is for, um, for it, does it wear well? 
uh, once it's washed and dried. But yeah, I'm leaning towards nitpicks for um, to stock up on worsted weight and possibly chunky weight yarns for all the blankets I want to make. <laughs> so let me put this stuff away and I want to show you something else I've recently purchased. Okay. I've got to figure out where I'm going to put all of these. My husband, he's so sweet. He brought me um, like a six pack of these, of these bins. Pretty good size. They're small, but good size where I can keep um, some yarn in so that I can keep things neat and order orderly. Uh, let's see. Okay, before I get to the last thing I bought, I, I f kind of forgot about this. I bought another Karen One Pound in black because I do have a blanket that I was working on that is one of my whips. And it. I showed this when I was showing my whips. This is the Hobie Manaya color, the, the rainbow colored yarn and um, Karen one pound in black. That is what it looks like um, every two rows changing colors. And I really like that. I had started making a pillow cover with this and um, my daughter didn't seem too thrilled about it. I didn't tell her I was making them for her, for her, her home. Um, but she's like, eh, it's okay. She goes, I think it'd look better in a blanket. And so um, I decided to set it aside and see what I want to make. Here's the um, Hobie Manaya. Aren't those beautiful colors? They've got several color schemes um, available on their website. Anyway, I have two of these skeins and I'm not sure if I have the, where the, the label is, if it's in here. Anyway, I was doing some color control. So I have little balls of different colors in this bag that I don't want to get them all mixed up. So um, just know that this is uh, Manaya um, from Amigo. And then the black, I am using the Karen One Pound, which is another blank, a yarn I wanted to try out for blankets. And so I thought this would be a good time to do that. So what I, I already took the, um, the edge um, off of this. This had black edge, edging on it. And I think I will make these into some blankets. I have two squares, not quite the same size. Um, when I first started crocheting, I wasn't too concerned if I was off a couple stitches here or there. Now that I know what I'm doing, <laughs> um, I, you know, I want them to be, I don't want to say perfect, but, you know, work well. And I thought maybe I could make um, six of these squares and then with the thick black border and, um, and then sew them together to make a blanket or, or eight, eight of these large squares. So that's kind of where I'm leaning as far as this blanket goes. Not in any hurry. It's not made for anyone in particular, but aren't those colors beautiful? I think they're so gorgeous. And... That's that. So yeah, the Karen one pound. And then Okay, the last thing I want to share with you is um this book I ordered that came in the mail and it's called The Art of Slip Stitch is the book. And I was on a live with I'll put it in the show notes, but I was on a live and the gal was talking about slip stitch knitting and how you can do color work with slip stitches or uh, make designs, you know, in sl using slip stitches. And I, it, I've been so curious about slip stitch knitting that I wanted to learn more information. So I asked her in the live if she knew of a book that would be um, great for slip stitch. And she uh, told me about this book. So here's an example of a tote that was made using slip stitches. Look at the design on there. And those are made with slip stitches. Isn't that awesome? So yeah, so that's the kind of thing that always catches my eye, these different designs and, and, um, and all that you can do with slip stitches. So I've got this book to go through. Here's another example, these little uh, boot toppers. And 
Let's see if there's anything else in here. Okay, here's another design made with slip stitches. And, oh, that's cute, look at the hat. Isn't that adorable? Slip stitches. <laughs> and let's see, you saw the bag and, Oh, this is cute. Here's a, I think it's a pullover. Oh no, it's a cardigan, a zipped up cardigan. But look at the design on that. Isn't that nice? Yeah, I'm just interested in what all I can do with slip stitches and I wanna make something pretty cool. So, uh, so that's one book I ordered. Um, the other book is called Geometric Knit Blankets. Um, this is by, oh, this book here, Slips, The Art of Slip Stitch Knitting, uh, is by Faina Goberstein and Simona Merchant Dest is the book. Um, this um, Geometric Knit Blankets is by Margaret Holtzman, and she has a lot of samples in Ravelry. Um, I was watching... No, I did a search for geometric blanket because I wanted to make something geometric. Um, and I found some, vide uh, some videos on YouTube uh, where she was showing her samples that were made for this book. And um, this book contains 30 patterns of innovative and fun to knit designs. And uh, I'll show you a few of them here. So here's one that I'll show you. And all of the designs that I've seen so far, I saw one that uses DK weight yarn, uh, numerous that use worsted weight, and some that use chunky weight as well. And here's another one. They look pretty involved. And it's really interesting to see how she goes about um, putting these blankets together if she makes these you know strips and then sews them together or if you start with a square and work your way out to a certain point do that 30 times and then sew them together etc um, yeah it's just really interesting and I love all of these geometric designs let's see if I can show you some more here oh, there's a neat one here just all kinds of fun things she used to be an engineer and now she's retired so maybe that's the engineer part of her is what gives her the um, the ability to look at a design and decide, oh, let's put it together this way. The back actually has all kinds of different, um, I think it has a picture of each of the different designs in here. If you do a search for Margaret Holtzman on YouTube, you will um, see some videos where she talks about her book. I'm trying to make sure that you can see all the different designs that are in this book. Anyway, pretty cool stuff. And I have lots of worsted weight yarn that I just bought, so I'm kind of looking through the book to see what I want to make there. Um, I've got some DK weight, the Hobie Amigo, or I can double that, and I would have some chunky uh, weight yarn to work with. And so, so yeah, I'm looking at options and trying to decide what I want to make. Um, here is another one. This one looks pretty easy. Um, you have two different options as far as how you put together the squares and s squares, squares and triangles basically. So you've got method A or method B, and then here is a layout of how you would lay it out and she talks about you know how where you would sew it together and with this one uh let's see yeah with this one you can start from the outside in or from the inside out to make this design and the each of the squares with their triangles and um so it's pretty cool it's it's interesting it makes you look at patterns a little differently like oh okay I see where she's going with this <laughs> uh, let's see where's the DK one I don't think I showed you this one this is called Verdant and this one is made out of DK weight yarn which I have quite a bit of but I used up all my teal so <laughs> but you know you can always change color schemes 
And yeah, so I was kind of looking at that one. So just so many awesome designs. And, and some are really simple looking, but it makes you think, okay, how would I put that together? How, where would I begin with this one? You know, and how do I get the circles to um, attach to all the rest of the background yarn uh, design, whatever. Here's another one that I really like. Um, quite a few colors, but they're like primary colors. And um, yeah, I mean, you, you of course don't have to use the yarn she suggested or the colors, uh, but yeah, I'm loving it. Oh, here's another one. I, <laughs> I could show you the whole darn book, <laughs> but you can see it if you go online. I went on Amazon the other day or a week ago and when I ordered it and it was $20. It was like seven dollars off so i don't know if amazon still has that deal um um or if margaret holtzman has that deal on amazon but you could check if that's something that you're interested in so so yeah i think that's everything i i just feel like okay there's got to be more but i've been focusing on a couple projects at a time and so i don't have as many items to share with you but my progress is more. So there's always a trade-off depending on how you want to approach your, your work. So I haven't heard from the winner of the two skeins of Cotton King's yarn that I um, pulled her name last Friday. And there is a video, a short video, where I, I pulled the name using the random comment picker. So if you happen to know the person that won um, and know how to get in touch with her, great. Um, I just haven't heard from her. And so if you are the person that won this yarn in last Friday's video, uh, definitely email me. My email is in the um, description of the short video that I made last Friday when I picked a winner. And I state, stated that you have 10 days to notify me. So today is seven days, so three more days. And otherwise I'll have to pick another winner. Um, I, I don't wanna contact the person myself because it wouldn't be fair since I don't contact other people that have won. Um, plus I don't wanna get into running people down. Hey, you won, do you want it? <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's just not a good practice, I'm sure. So yeah, if you know the winner, certainly give her a heads up. And if you don't, um, stay tuned next week. I may be giving these again. And lastly, we are up to, uh, this morning, I believe it was 315 subscribers. So I want to say a big thank you to everyone who has subscribed, who was with me since the very beginning and who, uh, those of you that are new, newly subscribing or just finding me, I so appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun and yeah, I think that's it. Have a great, great weekend. Bye-bye.